that is when then the bilirubin builds up in the gallbladder like from a gallstone and if it can't be drained out it's going to back up in the system and it backs up basically into the tissue cirrhosis of the liver if the liver doesn't process the biliveridin guess what backs up into the body and then the connective tissue backs it up like a bruise and it's got to be taken care of that way and then of course hepatitis now the uh, fetal hepatitis basically newborn sometimes their livers don't kick in right away um, they don't have any of these causes it just takes a while for the livers to come online essentially um, and so what they will do is fade them put them on the sun lamp right <laughs> with, a, with a lamp essentially yeah. generally because parents don't like to see their yellow babies usually it kind of goes away as soon as the livers kick in but um, parents usually want something done right away and they, they usually just fade them why and then the liver takes care of it over time why do they track it so carefully um, just to watch and make sure the liver comes back online more than it they're more worried about liver function than the fact that they're I don't, I don't want to take a blood test every day. yeah they wanted to watch and make sure the liver started kicking in but it wasn't the actual yellow they were concerned about it was let's make sure the make liver sure. is kind of all right, red blood cell disorders. Well, the big, uh, the big umbrella term here is anemia. And basically with anemia, what we have is a lacking of blood. There isn't one type of anemia. There are several types of anemia. And again, there are lots and lots of different causes here. Um, and I just picked out a few ones that are common and ones um, that I think are interesting. Basically, anything that causes a low oxygen carrying capacity qualifies as an anemia. It is usually a symptom of something else. People don't suffer from anemia as a disorder. It's usually part of some other underlying cause here. For instance, anytime you have an insufficient number of red blood cells, it will usually fall under one of these. A hemorrhagic anemia, well, if you're bleeding out from something, you're going to have too few red blood cells. It can be acute, well, like you cut off your arm. You now, if, if your red blood cells are on the sidewalk, they're not helping you, right? Uh, or it can be chronic. Now, chronic means over time. If you have a bleeding ulcer and you don't even know it, you can actually lose sufficient numbers of red blood cells that they aren't replaced in time, that you don't have enough to replace it, you don't replace it fast enough, that you don't have enough oxygen carrying capacity and you feel tired uh, because it's a constant bleed out, for instance, in the stomach or in the gut, um, and you can feel the effects of that. Basically, you don't keep up. What do they test for that? Okay. Basically, you end up being really tired, and yeah, you go in and a hematocrit shows you really, really low. Hemolytic, a transfusion or a bacterial infection or parasites attack your red blood cell. With a transfusion, basically a transfusion, which is wrong blood type, uh, will destroy your red blood cells. Well, and you were probably short a few to begin with. So now the ones you did have aren't working right either. Uh, bacterial infections can attack your red blood cells or any type of parasites like malaria destroys the ones you have. Now you simply don't have enough. Abnormal red blood cells, iron deficiency. Basically, the body does keep kicking out red blood cells, but if you don't have enough iron, you produce a red blood cell that's called a microcyte. And basically, they're shrunk up little red blood cells. And if they're shrunk up, they're not going to carry enough oxygen. Thalassemia is when you, is a, it's a genetic disorder, and basically, you produce faulty globin chains. So once again, if your hemoglobin is not correct, you're not going to carry enough oxygen. You may have enough numbers of red blood cells, but if they don't carry enough oxygen, it doesn't do you any good. Pernicious, I just like that word. So I threw that one in there. I, I thought of pernicious. <laughs> uh, deficiency of intrinsic factors. So again, you're not going to produce the hemoglobin correctly. And sickle cell anemia is when you have abnormal hemoglobin. This is actually one 
incorrect amino acid of the 120 on two of those chains. And what happens here is for people who are, this is a, a, a genetic disorder again, when you have low oxygen carrying capacity, or when you have low oxygen, if you exert yourself too much, what happens is um, the ox some of the red blood cells, instead of taking this shape, will take this shape. They will sickle up because of the wrong chain on the amino acid. <coughs> now, how is this going to go through a capillary? It's not going to, right? So what happens is this is going to get to a capillary. It needs a nice, round, smooth sides in order to squeeze through the capillary. So if half your red blood cells are capable of doing this when oxygen, when oxygen gets low, and not oxygen carrying capacity, but when oxygen gets low, and this starts to happen at your capillaries, they're going to all bunch together. Now what's going to happen to the tissue that's downstream from that bunching up together? Yeah, it gets no oxygen in a condition where oxygen was already too low. And then these people basically have acute conditions where they collapse down and their tissues get into trouble behind these capillary beds. That was the body's way of fighting malaria though, wasn't it? It is. It is. And that is why the gene remains in the population. Now, malaria uses these to reproduce, but it can't use these. So in some areas, this is a huge advantage. So the gene remains in the population. So you got to go, well, you know, there, there's good and bad on that. All right. Polycythemia. Excessive red blood cells. Poly means many. Now, the result of this is going to be highly viscous blood. Normally, you'd sit here and go, well, how can you have too much oxygen? Well, too much oxygen is usually an okay thing, but if you have too many red blood cells, then you can get that highly viscous blood, which increases the workload on the heart, and it's also going to damage your blood vessels because these cells hit the vessels, which is nothing more than a simple squamous epithelium, and you beat up on the epithelium and can tear that, and thus cause all sorts of problems like blood clots and things like that along the way. Usually due to a bone marrow cancer, usually the body regulates it, but if you've got a cancer, cancers usually cause you to produce too many cells, not too few. Um, can also be due to dehydration. If you dehydrate yourself too much, then you concentrate the cells, thereby causing a viscous blood. Does that make sense? Take out the fluid, increase the concentration. Kind of like oil for your car. Yeah. There you go. I never use that one, but that's a good one. That's a really good one. Secondary polycythemia. This one is basically self-induced. It's due to environmental conditions. Uh, when you go and live in high altitudes, you increase your red blood cells. So people who live up there, they have to watch their heart conditions. A lot of them actually can be hypertensive because of this, because the heart has to push so much harder to keep the blood going. They live up there, they have to deal with low oxygen conditions. This is how the body deals with that. Definitely have to watch that. Workload on the heart increases, and it increases your risk of stroke because of that. So that's what they get for their mountain views.